In today's video, we're going to be implementing authentication using the Gorilla Sessions package as well as the Gen package for our routing. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. If you're going to be making a simple site that just needs to log people in and keep them logged in, then I would recommend using Sessions. Now, on the other hand, if you want to create an API or if you have something that's going to require a lot of horizontal scaling, then I would recommend looking into JSON Web Tokens. Now, don't worry, in a following video, we are going to take a look at JSON Web Tokens. In quick review, the user is going to fill out the login form with their username and their password. When the user hits the submit button, it's going to send the username and the password on our post request back to the server. The server is going to check this versus what it has in the database. And if this password indeed goes with this username, well, we're going to go ahead and log them in. We're going to do this by creating a session that we're going to save on the server. Now, if you really want to, you can save this in many different places, including many different databases. So we're going to go ahead and create our session. And we're also going to be sending back a cookie on a, on a response back to the user. Now, a cookie is just a piece of data that we can save on the user's device. Now, with our cookie, if we're not going to be accessing any data on this cookie uh, in the JavaScript on the client's device, well, then we're going to go ahead and set the HTTP only flag just to be on the safe side. This will prevent JavaScript from accessing it and this will protect us from some kind of malicious uh, JavaScript that a uh, hacker may be trying to inject onto our site. Now we're gonna be using a modern platform, so uh, we really wouldn't have to worry about this too much anyway, but for best practice, we're gonna go ahead and set that anyway. Now for all the subsequent uh, requests, we're gonna be sending this cookie on the request to the server. And the server is gonna use this session ID on the cookie to authenticate the user you know, every time they need to be authenticated. So it uh, doesn't matter how many times we send it, we're just gonna keep sending it back um, until this cookie expires. All right, let's run our code. So here we're at index, let's go to login. Notice that we do not have a cookie yet. We have not created a session. So if we refresh this, there's no cookie here. When we hit submit, it's going to send the username and the password on a post request to the server. And if it matches what we have in the database, it's going to go ahead and log us in, create a session, and send back our cookie. So let's go ahead and hit submit. There we go. Now we have our cookie. And with this cookie, it's going to allow us to authenticate in routes where we need to authenticate, such as profile. And here's our profile information. Now, if I was to delete this cookie, and I try to go to profile. Well, remember that our middleware is running before our profile handler, and it's just going to, if it does, it can't authenticate us, it's just going to send us back to the login page, as you can see here. We will still be using the gen package for our routing, and for our sessions, we'll be using gorilla slash sessions. We'll be using bcrypt to encrypt our passwords. We're going to be using the SQL package, and the driver we're going to be using is the MySQL. Driver, notice that we have a blank identifier. So we will not be accessing uh, the MySQL package directly in our main.go file, but the SQL package will absolutely need this driver. It needs to have access to it. We will also be using the encoding slash gob package. Uh, Gorilla Sessions uses this to serialize the data and to get it back out, we're gonna have to register our particular data type, which is the user struct. Uh, so that way we can get it back out. We have created our data type user, which is just a struct with fields describing our user. We have our variable DB, which is a pointer to the DB data type inside of the SQL package. We're going to use the methods on this to interact with our database. Uh, we have our session store which we create using the Gorilla Sessions package, new cookie store function, which is going to return a pointer to sessions.cookiestore. Now notice that we only pass in one key. We could pass in more than one key. We have to have at least one for authentication, for authentication key. And optionally, we could pass in another one for our encryption key. We're going to go ahead and set the store options to HTTP only to true. Uh, since we are not going to be accessing any data on our cookie by the JavaScript on the client's computer, well, there's no reason to keep this door open. We're just gonna go ahead 
and set this to true. Uh, also, if you're running a website and you want to make sure it runs, you know, this only works on HTTPS only, well, go ahead and set uh, the store options uh, secure to true. Uh, the default for both of these is false. We're also going to be using the encoding slash gob package. This is the package that Gorilla Sessions uses for serializing its data. So uh, register records a type identified by a value for that type under its internal type name. The name will identify the concrete type of the value sent or received as an interface variable. So we're going to be using the sessions a session data type which has a field called values and this is a map of it takes a key as empty interface and it returns a value of empty interface so this is going to keep track of since we're passing in as passing in as of type interface this is going to keep track of that concrete type so we're going to be passing our data type user and it's going to keep track of it like okay so that is a you know a struct so it's going to allow us to get that value back out we're going to use gen default to return our engine, which we're going to call router. We're going to use the uh, method load HTML glob, and it's going to look inside of the package where this main.go file is, and it's going to look for this pattern, which we're looking for a folder called templates. So inside where we have this main.go file, yes, we do have a folder called templates. And inside of that, here's our wildcard. So we can the first part can be named anything. And since it's .html and all of ours are .html, these are all going to get parsed. Uh, we're going to go ahead and run sql.open, and it's going to take our driver name. In this case, we're using MySQL. If you're, say, you're using something like NoSQL, you'd put that there, and just make sure you have the appropriate drivers uh, package at the top of your main.go file. Uh, and then we also have our data source name. Um, so uh, it's going to be, we'd be using root and our password for our, our connection um, port's going to be 3306, and the name of our database is gen underscore db. Um, if we have it run into an issue, we just want this to panic right away, and we also want to make sure that this connection gets closed. Uh, should, should we run into a problem later? Let's go and take a look at so this. So we have our middleware for authenticating so our user. Now we don't want to run this middleware on every single route, for instance, for our index, database page, and we have our users table, or at, we have uh, some slash login for into it. Rendering our login form, we don't want to run that easily. The authentication uh, middleware uh, uh, before we go to those. So we're going to create a um, new router just run group. The create table now command this and actually insert. takes any number uh, of want to these handlers. We're just passing one in, so it's it's a go file, a chain of these, but since it's just one, we're just gonna run the one. Uh, we're saving that into auth router. And so when we run, uh, to run this one, to get to this path, it's you know localhost 8080 slash user slash profile. So it'll run this middleware before it runs this profile handler, handler func. Looking at our functions, we have our index handler, which is just taking the HTML method. Uh, we're gonna pass in status code okay. Say, hey, index page.html that we had parsed previously. We're not passing in any data. And it just says, you know, welcome gophers. We could see earlier and has our link to log in. And if for our slash log, our, our get uh, slash login, well, that's just going to render our login form. Again, we're using the H HTML method, status code OK, login.html, not passing anything in. So if we go to that, our HTML here, uh, it's just our login form with our username and our password. We hit the submit button. The action it's going to take is that slash login, but this one isn't a get request. This one is the method is post. So it's going to run a different handler. And so, you know, the first one was login get handler. The other one is the login post handler. So when we hit the submit button, we're going to run that one. And we're going to use, uh, you know, the uh, post form method to get our username and our password so we can save those. Uh, we're going to use a convenience function here, user dot get user uh, by username. We go to that real quick. So this is just going to grab some uh, data from the database from us. So we have our statement select all from users where username is equal to whatever we pass in. We're using db.query row because we're just passing back one row. We're expecting one row. If we're expecting many, we'd be using uh, db.query, I believe. Anyway, we're passing in our statement and our username. Uh, we're going to go ahead and scan those into this uh, 
on the data type and this is the method, we're going to go ahead and scan that into the field. Uh, if we run into an error, well, we're going to go ahead and return that error. Uh, if we don't run into an error, we're just going to return nil. Back up to our function. Okay, so if everything is fine, we'll continue our code. But let's say if we do run into an error, we're going to say, hey, uh, you know, we couldn't pull that one. Uh, we're going to say, hey, status unauthorized. We're going to go ahead and send it back to login page. We're going to use the gen h uh, data type, which is just a map where it takes a string, returns an interface. We say, hey, this is our message, and check username and password. So if message does exist, go ahead and display message and return, so that way we don't render the render things twice. Uh, everything's good. Well, we're gonna use the bcrypt packages compare hash and password function, and we're gonna go ahead and pass in the password hash that we got from the database, and we're gonna compare that to the password we got from the form. So if they don't match, we're gonna run into an issue. So if this runs successfully, we're, it's gonna return nil. So if if they give us the right password, it's going to return nil, and we'll run this piece of code here. Um, if it doesn't, again, we're going to go ahead and send them back to the login page saying, hey, check username and password. Let's say it is the password, and it returns nil, so error is equal to nil. Then we're going to go ahead and create our session. We're going to use store.get, and it's going to return a session if there isn't one already. Uh, we're going to pass in you know, our context.request, and we're going to call this session. And then we're going to go ahead and save into values, which is, remember, this is a map of inter, to can take an uh, inter, in, empty interface and returns an empty interface. And we're just going to go ahead and say, hey, uh, let's go ahead and for user, let's just pass in our data type user, which we uh, got all that, uh, all those fields entered uh, from the database. Uh, anyway, we're going to go ahead and make sure we save that before we run this chunk of code here. Because save, you want to make sure uh, save is convenience method, yada, yada, yada. You should say, call save before writing to the response returning from the handler. So, so we're going to go ahead and save that. It just wants the request and the writer. Um, just like if we use the HTTP request and HTTP response writer. Um, and we're going to go ahead and send them to a different page, so loggedin.html, and pass in our username as username.username. .username. We go to logged in, say, hey, uh, you're logged in, welcome. So once we've saved this session and it's sent back that cookie to the user, it's going to be saved on you know, the user device. Uh, now we can, we can be authenticated if we go through, say, users or slash user slash profile. Well, it's going to go ahead and run this authentication code uh, middleware before it runs this one. So we take a look at that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use store.get to return our session called session. And we're going to go ahead and check to make sure we have a value for a user. And if, and if we don't, uh, we're going to go ahead and abort. So we're going to just go ahead and send them back to the login page. Now this c.abort is just going to abort from our chain of handlers. So might as well have it in there in case we had another. Uh, anyway, we're gonna return so we don't run the rest of this code. Uh, but if it does exist, they are logged in where we're gonna say, hey, yeah, our middleware is done. We're gonna go ahead and uh, go to the next middleware. Seeing that there's no more, it's just gonna go ahead and run the uh, profile handler. So if everything is good. So remember when we deleted the cookie, this was that chunk of code that was running because it couldn't show that, hey, we were logged in, so it sent us back to the login page. So if we go to our profile handler uh, function here, so our profile handler is going to use the template profile.html. We take a look at that. We're going to need our username as well as our email. So we're going to get those from our saved session. And as you remember, so we're going to go ahead and use store.get to retrieve our session. Then we're going to use session.value to return uh, that value. Now remember that uh, sessions field values is a map that returns an empty interface. 
So we're going to use type assertion to not only return that value, but also to check to make sure it is the, the type that we were expecting. So we've created our user uh, variable, which you know is of you know of type user, and then we got our OK variable, which is of type bool. So of our type assertion, if we get back true, it is of you know pointer to user what we expected. Then you know true being that this is an exclamation point, it would turn this to false. This would not run, and then everything you know ran well. So say hey status is OK profile.html, we're passing in that user, which we just pulled those values from, and you know it's gonna render our username and email. Uh, let's say if it is not of the type that we expected, well, this would be false. And then when this part here runs, you know, turns false to true, this would run and say, hey, it's not of type pointer to user, and say, hey, forbidden, let's take you back to the login.html, and then return so that this piece of code doesn't run here. Well, let's assume everything runs okay. It returns our value into our user variable of type, you know, pointer to user. And then, um, well, this chunk of code will run here. And again, like we said, status code okay, uh, running the, using the profile.html template. And we're just, you know, passing in our uh, gen.h data type, which has, you know, string of user as the key. And then the value is, you know, our user data type. So that just gets, you know, access this user and then passes in our username and email. Well, I hope the, hope the video was helpful. Hope it was useful. Um, if you like the video, please like, and subscribe. Um, a lot of appreciation for everybody who's helped shared uh, this on other different platforms, uh, help get the word out. Um, I don't like tying up the video too much with, uh, asking for, you know, uh, likes and, uh, so, subscribes, but uh, every little bit does help. So thank you very much. Um, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.